Hi, Ellen and Howie here, and uh, we wanted to focus uh, today on how we work with financial advisors in our practice. And other professionals. And others, yes. Um, so in, in the work that I tend to focus on, which is mostly transactional, um, I have a lot of interaction with financial advisors and that can play out, for example, if we do trusts, whether revocable or irrevocable trusts for our clients. In order for the trust to be funded properly, it needs to have all of the assets that the client has retitled into the name of the trust and that invariably leads to discussions with financial advisors to be sure that the retitling of the assets is done correctly so that it lands in the proper place. Um, so through that interaction we have the ability to direct the financial advisors and help the client to retitle their assets into their various trusts that they may be doing in order to implement their estate plan. Another scenario could be that when we do some planning for achieving Medicaid eligibility, many of our clients have IRA assets or retirement assets. And in planning for those assets, it may become necessary to know what the required minimum distributions are and how will that impact on Medicaid eligibility based upon the age of the individual and a decision may have to be made as to whether we're going to leave the IRA or retirement asset as is. Might we consider surrendering a portion or all of the retirement asset? Again, depending upon what the client's goals and objectives are and how much they're willing to pay in taxes. So that's really important information that typically the financial advisor would provide. And then a third scenario that might present is we are sometimes asked to serve as trustee of either a revocable trust or a supplemental needs trust. And in those circumstances, uh, we may be working with financial advisors regarding how the assets are invested, asset allocation, and things of that nature. So for a variety of reasons in our transactional estate planning practice, uh, we have interaction with financial advisors. And then um, on the litigation side, we interact with financial advisors and accountants and forensic accountants um, who have a, a threefold purpose, basically. One is, as a financial advisor or as a CPA, um, you have a duty to recognize incapacity of your clients. You may have a duty to recognize undue influence of your clients. Um, and to be sure that you're meeting those duties, you may bring in someone like me to say, hey, this is the scenario, this is what's going on, um, I don't have a trusted person listed on the form, I do, but the trusted person may be the one who is unduly influencing or trying to exploit my client, can you help here? So that's one way. Another way is um, I work with financial advisors and CPAs if we're in litigation and we're doing forensic work, whether that is um, from a financial advisor, maybe an opinion on the value of the account, how the account was managed, whether it was managed within the prudent investor rule or not, and from the CPA's perspective, that might be finding the money. Where is the money? What happened to it when so-and-so was the trustee? Is it all accounted for? or is it not? And if it's not, is it actionable? And in both those scenarios, um, the financial advisor and or the CPA may actually testify as expert witnesses in uh, whatever fiduciary litigation we are looking at. And the last way um, in a litigation context that we work with the financial advisors and the CPAs is really in um, bringing a solution to the table. Uh, we're not all about litigating. We want to include solutions as well. And that solution may be using an independent financial advisor or an independent CPA, someone who is not tainted, or even if they weren't tainted, known to the other members of the family who claim a bias or lack thereof. Um, and we can start fresh with that. Although that being said, we do try always, especially when the case comes from a financial advisor or a CPA, try to keep the accounts 
with the financial advisor and with the CPA. Um, we're recognizing that these referrals are coming from these professionals and you know you want to do everything you can not to lose the business um, and so we always have that first and foremost in our minds when dealing with our professionals. And as always, if you have any questions about what we discussed today or otherwise, Ellen and I love to be a resource to the community and so we encourage you to give us a call. Happy to speak to you.